right at first, they'll give alarm calls to let other pikas know that you're coming. Hey, there's a big thing coming our way. But pretty quickly, they habituate to you. They'll even come up sometimes and try to run you off their territory. They'll yell right at you. They've been known to come up and try to bite people. They don't break the skin, though. They have pretty weak jaws. Mainly, they're communicating with their neighbors about what's going on in the environment. They have uh, both a short call and a long call, and the short call is for basically communicating with other members of the pika colony, saying something like, I'm about to go out and collect hay. I'm going out now. And then they'll go out and run out. They'll be totally silent when they're in the meadow, and they'll come back with hay, and they'll stuff it under the rock, and they'll come up and they'll call, I'm back. And basically, it's, it's letting other pikas know, hey, I'm here defending my territory. And also, when I'm out there running around in the meadow, it's not a weasel, it's just me. <laughs> I don't know, that, that might be what they're saying. But then the long call is the males advertising, hey, I'm a male, I'm a male, <laughs> and uh, trying to pair up with females. There are totally different dialects in different mountain ranges. And in fact, right up in Rocky Mountain National Park, there are two subspecies of pika, and their calls are quite different. Someone did a common garden experiment, and they actually took pikas out of the wild from both subspecies, and they interbred them, and they found that it was genetic. It wasn't a learned thing. The dialects are actually genetic. And so in Montana, I know what the pikas are saying because I've been studying there for 30 years. I know a few of the pika words in Montana, um, but here in Colorado, I still don't know what they're saying. <laughs>